And it's, it's sounding like, you know, Donald Trump got into office beyond Allah's will. As if Allah did not will it and Donald Trump like challenged Allah. Wallahi, this is how it's sounding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah is the owner of the mulk, of the kingship. Allah willed for him to become the president. Allah willed And you take the kingship from whomever you will. And you honor, dignify whom you will. What will you humiliate, put down whom he wills? Man tasha. Look at this at the end. What? Biyadika al khayr. All of this is khayr. <laughs> the fact that he given the kingship to this one and took it away from this one, dignified this one, humiliated this one, it's all what? People like Donald Trump, they prove the Quran right. Allah says in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, that there will be an enemy from Muhammad. And since Muhammad going to, his message is going to be till eternity, they are bound to be critics and enemies of, of Islam and, and of Prophet Muhammad. So these people are proving the Quran right because, in spite of all these things, Islam is spreading. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Imran chapter 3 verse 54 Allah says Makarum makar Allah wallahu khairul makarin They plan and plotted Allah to plan Allah is the best of planner If you see after 9-11 The media war on Islam And throughout the world Normally people should think that now Islam should perish now yeah. Which they cannot But we find that more people want to know What kind of religion is this And we find that In USA alone in a span of, of about nine months after 9-11, 34,000 Americans accepted Islam. In Europe alone, in a span of 10 months after 9-11, more than 20,000 Europeans accepted Islam. So more they are trying to attack Islam, more Islam is spreading. I believe that in the long run, it is benefit for Islam. People want to know what is this religion. And whenever people attack Islam, you find that in the long run, it benefits Islam. And I told you the story before, and I have to tell it to you just to restore that belief in Al-Qadr. You know that king who had a minister? A king and a minister. The minister is the type who believes in Al-Qadr. Qadaillahi wa qadari. For one day, the king is messing around with a knife. He cut his finger. The minister said, Khair, insha'Allah. This is good, insha'Allah. Rajul belief, Yalima. The king got upset and he said, What good in me cutting my finger? Take him to jail. Put him in jail. Arrest him. So they arrested him. He was placed in jail. So in his way to jail, he said, What? Khair, insha'Allah. It's good, insha'Allah. There is goodness in this one too, insha'Allah. It was the habit of the king and minister that every week they go out to hunt and have a nomad kind of lifestyle. Of course, he doesn't have his minister. The minister used to be the one who leads his way. He doesn't have him this time. He got lost in the jungle. He got arrested by a group of Bedouin who used to worship idols. And it happens that this day they are supposed to offer a qurbani, a human qurbani to their idol. They said, we will not find anyone better than this guy. He's dressed so nice. I mean, he is the qurbani right here. But he looked at, they looked at his hand, they found him missing a finger. They said, we offer a qurbani like this to our God. Get out of here. You're not even good to be a Qurbani. So he was spared. In his way back to the palace, he started reflecting upon the statement, saying, now I understand 
why the minister said it's good that I lost my finger because would I have that finger I would have been slaughtered by now so immediately when he arrived at his palace he requested the release of the minister he said listen I understood why you said khair but what is good in you going to jail he said would I have been with you on that journey I would have been the qurbani so it's all good this is the style of Iman. This is ikhwa, the asset of faith. This is what faith provides for a believer that no one else can give.